Hello everyone, I just took the ASC T7 heating, ventilation, and AC test. I literally just drove back home and we're making this video because everything is super fresh. The questions, the studying, so you guys are gonna be in for a good study tip and advice video. All right, first off, if you have worked on AC systems, you're light years ahead of everyone. Now, I've owned about 60 cars, and I'm a master tech, but I haven't worked on a lot of AC systems. It's just they usually don't fail, but if you've been doing it for a long time, you're gonna be really, really good. But I'm still gonna recommend everyone, every single person, to buy the Motor Rage book. I am not sponsored, it would be amazing if I was, but this is just a great book. I mean, it really describes everything. The information part where you're reading about the different systems, the different sensors, the different information is amazing. It's really well written. And then you've got questions, and this particular one, let me tell you how many questions there are, uh, but they're test questions, and there is 65 of them, and they tell you in the answer sheet what went wrong. So pretty much, you know, what, what's right and what's wrong, and they give you a good description. So I'm going to recommend you get that book and start studying. So what's a couple of things you're going to want to study and you're going to see on the test? Now, I can't tell you exactly what's on the test because I would get in trouble, but you really need to know about refrigerant. So let's talk about refrigerant. You need to know what's the appropriate way to evacuate it, you know, whenever you put some vacuum on it for about 30 minutes, what's the purpose of doing that? Removing the moisture, removing the air. Can you, and then you also have to know, can it remove oil, yes or no? Also, when you're taking out old refrigerant, what containers are it supposed to be in? There's different color-coded containers, there's different types of containers, and they have to have, uh, essentially, they need to be at a certain state. They can't have moisture in them, they can't have non-combustible gas, or, or there's a lot of things that you need to know about storing refrigerant. Not only is it like an EPA law, but it's also good for the atmosphere and it's a good practice for your health as a technician. So know your refrigerants, know your R12, know your R134, know what's usually used, know what type of what pack oil is, just know about refrigerants in general, and if you've worked with them, you're gonna be light years ahead. All right, the next thing, gauges. I went on uh, YouTube, looked at Chris Fix, do a whole thing with his gauges. I looked at a bunch of other people using gauges, and uh, essentially you could buy a set of Harbor Freight ones or some Pittsburgh ones, it's probably the same thing. Or again, if you're doing this at your shop, you're gonna be light years ahead. But for a lot of us guys who work at different shops, performance shops, specialty shops, we don't see a lot of AC issues because usually AC issues are usually just a recharge system. You're not seeing a lot of repairs and that's where the test gets in there and you really do need to know how the AC system works. You need to know about the receiver, about the condenser, about the evaporator, about the uh, compressor. You need to know what happens when there's too much air uh, gap in the compressor clutch. You need to know what happens when the shaft uh, uh, seal breaks in it or it fails on the compressor you need to know about dye you need to know about uv dye you need to know how it's helpful how you insert it uh, what if you see certain dye in certain areas so a lot of the ac system is a little complex if you don't have a lot of history but this is where motor age is really going to help you so it is a hard pill to swallow because for me AC is not the most exciting thing, right? But the cool thing about it is that as you learn about it, you start to understand things at home too. I know I'm digressing, but AC systems are pretty much the same across the board. They have the same concept. So just learning the whole entire intricacy of an AC system is gonna be just helpful across the board in different areas of your life, trust me. So you're gonna to wanna to read front to back. It's a hard pill to swallow, but once you do that, you're gonna be light years ahead. You're gonna do the questions and you, whatever you're gonna get wrong, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna study them. And if you need some more information, you can use YouTube. And if you're really lost in the sauce, if you've never worked in an AC system, and I know a lot of people are gonna be judgmental towards people who haven't used an AC system, they're a technician, they meet the requirement for the experience, they meet the requirement to take the test, go shadow someone, go to the shop, watch them repair, remove a compressor, put it back in, you know, evacuate the system, recharge the system, measure the system, put the correct oil, you know, make sure you install the belts. You know, once you do that, when you're reading everything, it's just gonna be like, it's gonna be, it's gonna make sense. And that's what you want. You want things to make sense. If you've already worked on AC systems, when you read this, 
it's not only going to make sense for you because you've already done it, but you're going to learn because they're going to get a little bit more deeper into what, uh, what those systems consist of. So a couple of things I saw in the test and I can't tell you specifics, but they definitely talked about low side and high side issues. What happens if you have low pressure on both sides, on both the low and high sides, or if you have a normal reading on the low side, or if you have a really high reading on the high side. So you really want to know what those symptoms are, because when you're looking at the gauges, which is the most important tool for a technician when they're working on the AC system and they're trying to diagnose the condition of the AC system, you kind of want to know what's going on. You want to know if there's a restriction, you want to know if there's low uh, refrigerant, or if there's an overcharged refrigerant, or if there's a leak. One of those things that a lot of people uh, over look is after you evacuate a system you want to do that quick leak test where you disconnect everything and you look at your gauge and if you see that it's moving and it's you know it's essentially there's going to be a leak and you want to know about that you want to know about not only how to do services but you want to know about the intricacies of those services and also the the small things that you might overlook even after working on them for so long you also really really want to know how a blower system works you want to know how the blow, blower system works in a, in a circuit. You wanna know if there's four settings, if the high setting is integrated or if it's outside of the circuit. And what I mean by that, sometimes the high side will bypass a certain port of the circuit because it's just the high side. So they're gonna, there's gonna be questions where they're gonna be asking you, you've got three modes that work and one mode doesn't work or vice versa. So you really need to know how a relay works. You really know how to read a schematic. You really need to understand how a blower system works and how it activates. If you know how to do that, you're light years away. I think this test, uh, AAC did a great job because not only did they give some common sense questions, but they also pretty much, uh, uh, anyone who has experience, it's gonna be really good for them. And I can use the word easy, but they're gonna be ahead of the, the curve on that. But that's about it, guys. This was a uh, hard pill to swallow test. That's the best way I could describe it because it wasn't that exciting for me, but I passed it and, um, and I'm going for my world technician and I'm not afraid to admit that I don't have a ton of experience of AC systems. So I did get a 25, which the minimum is 25. And I'm owning that because that makes me happy. Like I passed, I'm moving on. I'm trying to get that world-class technician. And, uh, and so we're down. So I think we have now like, we're done with 16 tests or something like that. And I think we have another seven to go or something, something crazy like that. But it's exciting. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, the best thing I could tell you, again, to recap, buy the book and do everything I said in the video and you'll be fine. All right, guys, thank you for watching. You take care, stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon.